Hey guys, it's Ashley from Ashley's Cup Excitement, and I'm here with my February wrap up and March TBR. Yay! So, in February, I only managed to read three books, which is sort of shameful. But two of them were big books. Like, two of them were over 500 pages. So, I would think that that would count for something, maybe, probably, sort of. Yes. So the first book that I read in the month of February was Night Film by Marisha Pestle. Now this book is a weird one to explain. It's like this guy used to be a private investigator. Well he still is I guess. And he kind of sabotaged his career when he tried to investigate this mysterious cult film director named Stanilus Cordova. He made a claim against Cordova. It ruined his career, ruined his life, his marriage, I think all that stuff ruined it. And now it's like five years later, Cordova's daughter has died, and he gets sucked in to the Cordova mystery again. So he's trying to find out what happened to Cordova's daughter, if what happened to Cordova's daughter was something related with... Cordova's Dark Ways or something like that. It was filled with pictures, transcripts, um, music. It was filled with everything. It was a really awesome book and I ended up giving it a four and a half out of five. It didn't feel like a book to me. It felt more like a movie. So I definitely recommend that you go check that one out. It's an adult book. The ending is it'll make you question everything still. You know, the ending didn't give me exactly what I wanted, but it was still pretty awesome. And also, for those of you that are interested, there's a little app that you can download to your smartphone, and I think it's called the Night Decoder app or something like that. And on some of the pictures in the book, there's a little symbol of a little bird. And you can put your phone using the app over that, and it'll play secret content for from the book which is kind of cool it, it added to the reading experience I tried out all of it all of it but so night film is a very good book and you should go read it and the next book that I read was deadline by Mira Grant this is the second book in the news flesh trilogy and you guys you guys you guys I only ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 I didn't really like it I'm not going to spoil the first book for you, but the way the first book ends, there's kind of a definite end to it. And in Deadline, I don't feel like the author really planned on where to go from ending the first book that way. So she just tried to maybe have the second book go on like, like she didn't do what she did in the first book. I don't know if I'm explaining this right. So here's what I'll say. I'm not going to say who, but somebody from the first book isn't supposed to be in the second book, and the author didn't think that one through, and so she included the person that wasn't supposed to be in the first book in the second book in a kind of dumb way. So I just, it was planning. It was just bad planning on the author's part, I feel like. May maybe I'm being too mean and I have no room to talk. But just while reading it, I was like, come on. It's very melodramatic and the characters annoyed me sometimes. Sean annoyed me most of the time because the way out of things is not just to punch everybody. That never works out. It's not going to make everything better. It doesn't work. So yeah, I mean, it's like... It's, it's, it's a zombie book, but it's more like a political conspiracy thriller kind of book. And I, I just wasn't into it. I wanted straight zombies. So kind of blah for that book. And then the last book that I read, I read with my best booktube buddy, Allie, of Allison Murphy. I'll link her below. You should go check out her channel and subscribe. And we read together Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. She guilt tripped me into reading this. Well, no, not guilt tripped. I had this on my shelf forever. She knew I had it on my shelf forever. So she was like, Ashley, I'm going to make you read this book with me. And I was like, okay, Allie. But then I was really like, yay, Allie, thank you for making me read this. So I ended up giving Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children a four and a half out of five because it was awesome, awesome. It was really good. 
I loved the creepy children. I loved the mysterious island, the abandoned house, the everything. The photos really, I really like the photos in here. They kind of make, well, they add a little something extra to the story. Although, I will say with some of these photos, it just feels like he added them in there because they were super creepy looking and he really didn't have any characters in mind for them. At least I didn't see them. These two clown boys, these are what I'm talking about. There were no clown, creepy clown kid characters in this book. It, but it was a really good story. I liked everything with Jacob and his grandpa and finding out about the peculiar children and his grandpa's legacy, kind of. The only thing that was kind of eh was the romance aspect. It was almost a little icky. And if you read this, or if you have read this, tell me what you thought of the romance, if you liked it, or if you were like, I don't know about that one, because I'm curious. Allie agreed with me, too. So now I'm going to tell you what I'm going to read for March. Yay! I've already finished one book, which, since I'm filming this on the 6th of March, really isn't that much of an accomplishment, but I'm still going to pretend it is. So... I am going to be reading Death Note Black Edition Volume 1 by Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. Now, I'm going to be reading this with Alan of Alan Janae. I'll link her channel below as well. Uh, she has this book. I have this book. So, we are going to read it together. It's been a while since I picked up a manga anime and just read it through... Um, but I do like them. So, and this is about a guy who gets a death god's notebook. And if he, if he writes a name into this death god's notebook, that person will die. So it's kind of like what he does with this power. And yeah, so I'm excited to read this. Then I just picked out four library books. I'm only limiting myself to four because I didn't do very well in February. So the first one is Invisible Murder by oh, Lenny Caberball and Agnet Frizz. This is one of those Swedish, Danish, Nordic crime mysteries that I've been loving. So I'm excited to read this. And then I'm going to read I Don't Want to Kill You by Dan Wells. This is the last book in the John Cleaver trilogy. And I'm really excited to finish this. It's about this creepy kid named John Cleaver. He's a sociopath. He thinks about killing people and things. And he really doesn't want to be a serial killer. But he has all the tendencies of it. And then as the books go on, he finds different things to kill. He's kind of like a mini Dexter. Um, very creepy. I'm very excited to finish this series. And then I'm going to read A Fatal Likeness by Lynn Shepard. Uh, I picked this book up because I thought, eh, it looks interesting. It looks like it's Victorian. I know it's something about Mary Shelley, the author of Frankenstein, and other people. And then the last book that I have in my TBR pile is I Hunt Killers by Barry Liga. This is about the son of an infamous serial killer, and he wants to prove murder doesn't run in the family. So he joins the police to hunt for a new killer. And it just sounds good, and I've heard good things about this series. So that is my February wrap-up, my March TBR. Tell me how you guys did in February, if you did great bad, whatever, whatever, and I will see you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye!